here's, here's the thing, being stuck, that's, that's a lovely question. And so be, being stuck, if I'm stuck, stuck for me is a vibration. Uh, like, uh, it's been, it would be interesting to know in what context, but let's say I'm stuck. Oh, if I felt stuck on making spiritual progress, for example. Well, stuck is stuck is a is a vibration. It's an energy, and it might have mental thoughts. So, every any time I'm feeling a vibration, the solution for me is to dissolve the energy of it and dissolve the thoughts around it. Yeah. So, how do I do? So, what I would do is I dissolve the stuckness to get out of stuck, and I would. Not a, so I do feel the feelings on the feeling of stuckness and feel out the feeling. So what do I mean by that? I just sit with the stuckness until and allow myself to experience it and not resist it and fully allow myself to feel. Th you know, even the word stuck, I would let the word stuck go, the label stuck go, and just allow myself to experience the energy of it until it dissolves away. I'd also let go of, you know, the story of what I'm stuck around. I'd let go of those thoughts. And then when I don't feel stuck, and I've let go of the story of stuckness, i.e. I've transcended feeling stuck, then whatever, you know, then I will not be stuck. Usually what happens is the solution, the right intuitive solution will come after I let go of the stuckness. But here's, here's, what, here's a funny thing. Uh, it's, not, it's not what you'd think I, I would say. Like, there is nothing in this world that can, that can make you stuck. What makes you stuck in this world is an ego interpretation. Yeah? What makes you stuck is an ego interpretation of a situation. You know, let, let's, say, uh, let's say I'm in a car and it breaks down and I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere and I suddenly feel like I feel stuck and I have thoughts that I'm stuck. So I feel stuck and I have thoughts I'm stuck. And it seems like it's real. This is real. I'm, I'm in a car that's broken down in the middle of nowhere. So I wouldn't try and work it out, but I would try and I'd let go of my feelings, go to the zone of my thoughts, let go of my thoughts. And then, you know, once I'm there, I will not be stuck. Now, People might say to me, well, how does that fix the situation of you being stuck? And the thing is, actually, the, the enlightened state is not stuck anywhere, and it's, it transcends this world. So stuck is just a perception. Or stuck is just like the world is not the way your ego wants it to be right now. And, and the world is not the way your ego wants it to be right now. And so you're going to feel stuck. But in truth, the truth of who you are is never stuck anywhere, anytime. Even if you're about to die, even if you're about to die, let's say the doctor says you've probably got about 10 seconds left, you know. But you're still not stuck in that situation. If you, go, if you let go of your thoughts, the doctor has just said you're about to die in 10 seconds, you go to the observer of your body, you're, you're still not stuck. The paradox is, the paradox is if you let go of the vibration and let go of your thinking, not always, but often the right, the right guidance will come to you or you'll have a miracle and a shift in perception on the situation. And quite often when you let go of your perception of feelings, being stuck, don't worry, uh, if you let go of your perception of being stuck, and you let go of um, the feeling, quite often, like, the world will provide a miracle, you know, not, not always guaranteed. Sometimes the miracle is you let go of your perception of it. So, yeah, does that answer the question? Or do you, or it doesn't answer the question? Or do you um, want to put this off? Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, yeah, um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's letting go of the story yeah. and the, the feeling will take you into a different perspective and you'll, you'll have more clarity, I guess. I was thinking more when you feel paralyzed, you don't know which direction to go. But, yeah, but I guess it's just let go of that idea, that feeling, and then 
so you'll have more clarity. Yes, yeah. that's it, yeah. Mm. You know, for me, it's the thing of when you're in a low vibration, like stuck is a low vibration, even being in your thinking is a low vibration. And, um, you know, let go of your thinking, because the thinking and the feeling is the problem. Mm. So let go of the thinking and the feeling. Go to the, the place of no feeling, no thinking, the eternal the observer, and then you won't be stuck. But often a miracle or insight comes. And even if, even if you're stuck in the middle of the countryside and a miracle doesn't come, uh, and the car doesn't miraculously start, you still you will not be stuck. You probably realize that God wants you to meditate for it until <laughs> someone drives past or something like that. But you'll see it differently. You know, you'd be just happy, you'd be chilled out, and the cows will be moving, and you think God wants you to be with the cows for today. So you're not really stuck. So that, that's it. So that's, that's the stuck thing. So stuck, but the world, you know, the, the world, nothing in this world, in the, there is nothing in this world, the Course of Miracles will agree with me, it's not the world that makes you happy. The world, it, do not seek your happiness in the world. Do not seek your happiness in, uh, in, a, in a country being the only place you can be happy. And also, if, you're, if, you, if you get to the observer, like the observer is with you everywhere you go. So if, if anyone goes to the observer now or, or ever experienced the observer, is there such a thing as a country being more exciting than where you are now? Is there such a thing as meeting a person that's more exciting than now? Is there, is there a book that you have to read which is going to be more exciting than now? Go to that place. And here's the thing, like when you're in, where, and this is the thing of the love of, the love of, there's no words for to call it, the love of being in the eternal now, the observer, or the, or the grace, or the flow state. See, as soon as you have something that, oh, you know, what, what is it in me that's excited to read another book? What is it in me that's excited to visit another country? What is it in me that's excited to listen to another music? Can there be something that's more exciting than now, when you're in the now? So you ask that question when you're in the now, because that would mean that the now is not complete and whole in and of itself. Does that make sense? It's like, is everything, when you're in the timeless, eternal field of grace, when you're in the holy instant, can such a thing exist as there is a book tomorrow that I'm going to read which is more exciting than now? When you're in the eternal now, the holy instant, is there a country that you can be excited by that you need to visit? Can those things... So the thing is, like, if you're dedicated to the holy instant, or the world not being the source of your happiness, then that would mean that that state is constant, wouldn't it? That's a constant state of being in the now. So here's the thing of being excited by things in the world. Can you see what I'm talking about? No, you can't see what I'm talking about. So if you're in the now, you can't be in the now if something in the future is going to be more exciting than now. If you're in the now, and there's something within your ego that can be more exciting than now, then you're going to have a life of up and down. Bahamas is up, non-Bahamas is down. The next book is up, no, no book now is down. Uh, the new album I'm getting is going to be up, but not having the new album. So you're going to have a life of, of up and down. So the observer observes all ups and downs, yeah? So there is no thing as, as tomorrow or a future event or a future book or a future cu country being more exciting than now. What is that? I'm not trying to be a killjoy. It means that every moment is equally divine. And there is no such thing as a special country, a special book. Also, to be in the eternal now, at, a, at the last level, I'm not talking about people in early spiritual work, there is no such thing as acquiring more intellectual information, like intellectual information. Like for people who are practicing being in the observer of the timeless now, like reading a book that gives you intellectual information at that point, 
wouldn't be attractive. I mean, if you're reading a book about going to the observer of your thoughts, being the observer of your thing, or let go of everything in this world which is meaningful, The Course in Miracles, you know, in The Course in Miracles, anyone who's done The Course in Miracles, are you allowed to have a, a person be more special than a table? No. A table should not be more special than a person. Should a country be, should any country or location be any more special than any other country? No. Because everything, you know, this table is as meaningless as this chair. Do you remember the Course in Miracles? Anybody remember? Which is as meaningless as you. Which is as meaningless. And, you know, this cloud is as meaningless as this flower. Um, and even if it changed, even if there was a cloud there, and there was a black cloud there, and there was rain over there, th those are equally meaningless. Yeah. Can I have something yeah. in relation to that? I'm yeah. just thinking about, I can do that on that level in terms of a book or a thing to go to. I think where I struggle, and I, und I understand what you're saying, but I think where I really get gripped is when it's someone I love who is in suffering. And I know that's making that relationship special, but say my connection to my son, you yeah. know, so, and I can't get to that person, I can't, you know, I, that's where I really get stuck, but to get into the observer when that situation is going on, you know, I just find so much harder, you know, when, when, it's some, when something is, when a being is actually in suffering, to then step back and be an observer. Yeah. <coughs> that, that's a great, that's a great, great, that's a, that's a great question. I've shared in this group uh, endlessly about my mother. My mother um, was probably, might have been one of my biggest challenges in life. And I, I lived with, she died, she died uh, over a year ago. And my, my thing with her, and I'll tell you why, was to make her meaningless. To make her totally 100% meaningless. To fully transcend my mother. It's not my mother, I have no special attachment to her, to make everything she says to me meaningless, to make every facial expression meaningless, to make her vocal, you know, because, you know, I found that there was, uh, from everything I did, I found there was so many things with my mother that I made special. How she spoke to me, the words she used, her vocal tone, her facial expressions, uh, even, the, even her political opinions. You know, there was so much stuff that I was willing, and even that, you know, she was my mother and she's supposed to be a certain way. So I did, like, it took five years of spiritual work. And when there was nothing she could do or say, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and I had made all, done all this work to make it totally meaningless so I could retain the observer, um, the relationship transformed. She no longer triggered me, and we, we had a loving relationship. For, for a few years. And then she passed away uh, in the Royal Free Hospital uh, uh, over a year ago. And I, was, you know, I told her I loved her. She told me she loved me. But the relationship had transformed by making the relationship meaningless. Why? Here's the thing. Here's the thing which... Um, now, for me, the thing was personal love gives less than unconditional love. And unconditional love, if you really love someone, this is my view, take what you want if you really love someone, you need to get to the highest vibration around that person. Because otherwise, the amount of light you emit, the amount of capacity for them to experience miracles through you is reduced. So, if I really so to the extent I make a relationship special, to that extent I cannot be a channel of light around them. Because I will want to control them, I want to mother them, I want to keep them safe, I want to baby, baby cotton waddle them, I want to tell them about every single day, they're going to feel controlled, stifled, they're going to feel like they're in a place where they're not feeling unconditional love and acceptance of who and what they are, and all their choices, and they will not get light from you. Yeah. So this is really this becomes very very prevalent 
I go to the 12 step fellowships uh, and uh, this becomes extreme at the level of addiction you know when people become love addicted to someone I, that's when you make the person so special you think you need them to live now that's an extreme situation but that happens in the um, that happens in the in the addiction field you actually become dependent on them and you think you can't live without them and then you start to control them like mad because you want to keep them the way you want to keep them yeah and then if they die or something you feel you're going to commit suicide because they are the thing that keeps you alive so that becomes very extreme but actually when you become like that you know you're actually not giving them any light you usually become very controlling now usually when a person uh, in the 12 steps, I'll talk in 12 steps even if you're not in 12 steps, what we say in the 12 steps is you know the biggest thing to help a person is attraction not promotion is when you let them go and you become the light that gives them the most inspiration to get well and to blossom in their life not you telling them and looking after them and making them the most important thing in your life usually then Yes, I mean, you're, you're doing your best to look after them, but you're not a channel of light for them. You're not a channel. And you'll see in your other relationships, and when you fully let someone go, and you release them as being meaningless, quite often they get well, or they get more miracles in their life as you let them go. And as you hold them as more and more special, um, you don't get to see what would happen in their lives if you let them go. You love them. So when you get to higher levels, you're having what's called, you know, unconditional love or non-personal love or un is actually when you let go of all your attachments and your projections of specialness in the person. So you see the divine equally in all, but you don't make it a special. And, you, f you know, now here, here's the thing, I'll say this over and over again. And it's going to be extremely hard for, especially for mothers, because mothers is one of the biggest, you know, when a mother has love for a child, I mean, it's a, it's a very big thing. But, you know, so this is going to be hard, hard for mothers, but just listen to the words. You know, like Dr. Hugh Lev, he was the guy who was given uh, the files of a whole prison load of criminals. And he didn't go and visit them, he just forgave them. And I would say, my interpretation of that is like, in a way, what they had done was sinful. He, you know, he could judge those people as doing wrong, but he cleared the data, and, and so that they became totally meaningless, and the data was gone from his mind, i.e. they were forgiven completely. There was no judgment, no control, no specialness. There was nothing they had done wrong. And every single person in that prison got well, and they closed the prison down. So imagine if you're a mother, thank you, imagine if you're a mother and you do that for your child. What is going to be the biggest gift to them? That you clear your attachments and the meaning you give them, or that you hold a special... I'm not saying, I'm not, saying not to do that, but I actually mm -hmm. feel it's a bigger gift yeah. to let them go than it is to hold on to your special attachment. You give them more, mm -hmm. you know. And try that in your other relationships. You find that as you let them go, and you let them go, they have miracles and they get better. So imagine what would happen if you let the ones you really cherish. I'm not saying don't love them, but love them without attachment. Love them without meaning. That sounds very funny. But it's like you find an equal love for every human being. And that love is pure. But would you not give pure love to your child? Or would you rather give the love of attachment to your child? I'm not saying one is up, but if I had children, I don't. But I would actually try and make them meaningless and try and have impersonal, unconditional love, to have a love for every human being which is not more special for my child. Because I know that would give them more than me having a special love for them. So that sounds paradoxical. I know that sounds very paradoxical, but I know that when I let my mother go, our relationship blossomed because I let go of all my attachment. I let go of all my special relationship to her. And I knew that if I made my relationship 
totally, I, I wanted impersonal love. You're not special to me at all. And the relationship was wonderful. You know, there was a love that emitted because I let go of my attachment to her. And she benefited from the love that I had no baggage with her any longer. I cleared all my baggage with her. That was the biggest love I could give her before she died. Then to have hold, held on to my story of why this was a special relationship. So that's my thing. I know mothers have a hard job with that one uh, because. That speaks of truth to me. That yes. Speaks of truth. Thank you. That uh, that that is so.